Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am Richard Ross, your instructor. In this video, I'm going to show you how to close an open form in Microsoft Access using the doCommand.close VBA command and an onClose event. Now, don't be scared. Yes, it's one line of code if you want to close a form that's based on another form. I'm going to show you how this works in just a second. Today's question comes from Claudia from Henderson, Nevada, one of my Platinum members. Claudia says, I've got a couple of additional info forms that I can open for a customer, like their contacts, orders, service calls, etc. I like to keep these as separate forms, much like you do in your free customer template. It's a pain to have to close them all individually whenever I'm done with a customer. Is there a way to link them all so they close whenever I close the customer form? Well, Claudia, unless you make them subforms inside of another form, then there's really no way to link two forms together without using VBA code. Now, the good news is you can do it with literally one line of code in your VB. And I'll show you how to do it in just a second. It's real simple. I get it, though. I understand why you like to keep them separate forms. You can resize them, you can move them, that kind of stuff. For those of you who don't know what Claudia is talking about, if you've got like the customer list here, that's one form. And you can use this to open another form. Here's the customer's form. Now here you can open up the orders, right? You can open up contacts. And I mean, she's got a couple of other forms. She showed me a picture of her database. You know, most of them are different things like service calls and stuff like that. But what she's saying is when she's done with customers, she wants to just close the customer form. And then it takes all these other related forms with it. Okay, now there's no way to do that without code, but it's real simple. It's one line of code. You just have to know where to put that one line of code. It's kind of like the Tesla story that I have on my website. I'll put a link down below if you're curious. Okay, now if you've never done any VBA before, go watch this video first. I'll put a link down below in the link section, my intro to VBA. It's not that long. It teaches you all the basics you need to know to use Access VBA. But even if you don't want to watch this, I'm going to walk you through it step by step. All right, it's real simple. Here we go. All right, so here I am back in the database, okay? Let's bring up our customer form. Now, from here, I've got two other forms, orders, and I've got contacts, okay? Now, if I've got both of these open and I close the customer form, okay, I want it to also close the contacts and the orders form, all right? So that means on the customer form, I need an event that runs when this form closes. The event is called on close. All right, so go to Design View, right-click, Design View. All right, open up the Forms Properties right there, double-click. Go to the Events tab. All right, now find On Close. It's right down here, On Close. All right, don't click the down arrow. Click the dot, dot, dot button. Now, when you do that, you might get a little window up that says, what kind of builder do you want? I have that turned off on mine. I talk about this in the Intro to VBA class. Just pick the Code Builder. Okay, code builder. That'll put you right here in the VBA editor, okay, in the form close event. All you're going to do is come in here and type in this command. It's real simple. Do command, D-O-C-M-D dot close space. What kind of object are you trying to close? There's a list of them right here. Pick AC form, all right, access form. Comma, what's the name of the object you want to close? Well, let's close the contact form. So contact F comma, and then you have the option to prompt the user to save if you've made design changes, like if you've changed the design of the form, all right? There's no prompt or yes. I'm just going to go AC save yes. That'll save any design changes. The reason why I say yes is mostly for me. If I've made a design change and forgot to save it, I want it to save those changes. My end users will never work with a version of the database they can actually modify. So even if it says AC save yes, they can't make design changes anyways, so that's never an option. Okay? All right, so let's save this, control S. Now I'm gonna go back to the database. Let's close this down, reopen the customer form. All right, now let's open contacts, that's the contact F. Come back over here, now I'm gonna close this form, and look at that, it took it down with it. See that? Open up customer form, if contacts happens to be open and I come back over here and I close the customer form, it closes both forms. See that? One line of code to do that. Real simple. Want to do it for the order form as well, right? Here's the order form. I believe that's order F right there. All right, let's go back into the code. Right-click, design view, open up the properties. 
on close event, click on the dot, dot, dot right there. That brings you right back in here. And we'll put one more line right below it. Do command dot close AC form order F comma AC save. Yes. Right there. Save it. Come back over here. Close this all down. I like to shut everything down between runs, right? Open it back up again. Now let's open up the order form. And let's go back here and open up the contacts form. All right. Let me just move that over there for now. Okay. Ready? And close it down. See? It shut down all the related forms. Okay? Nice and simple. See? One line of code to close another form. You just got to know where to put it. You got to know how to get in there and, and put it in the right spot. There's all kinds of different events that you can use in here that run. All right? If you open this up again, come into the events tab. There's on current. That happens when you move from record to record or when you load the form the first time. All right? There's on load when a form loads. On open when it opens. There's a slight difference in those, but I cover those in my full classes. But basically, there's events that run when you do pretty much everything, when you add a new record, when you delete a record, all kinds of stuff. All right, but now you can see that if my other forms are open and I close the customer form, they shut down. See that? Now, one thing you do have to be careful of, though, is if you open up the order form, for example, and then come back here and go to a different customer. Okay, see that? then this doesn't change. Now, you could put an on current event in there that will open up the orders for that customer. It's a little more complicated. I do cover that in my full classes. But one thing you could do is just simply turn off the navigation buttons down here. Watch this. Let me close this guy. Right click, design view. All right, come in here. And then on the format tab, turn off the navigation buttons. Now, what this does is it doesn't allow save changes. Yes, it doesn't allow the user to scroll through the customer. So if they want to go to a different customer, they can go to the customer list and pick someone from that. Okay? And then if they go to orders, they can't come back here and scroll. They could open up another customer here. So again, there's things you could do. You can make this form modal, which means that they can't go behind it. All right? A modal form. I'm going to have a separate video on modal forms coming up. I cover this in my beginner classes, though. But if you go to other and change modal to yes, that means they cannot go behind this form Right, see how it's now modal. You can't go behind that form. You can open up another one on top of it, okay? But you can't go behind this form until you close it. So if you open up that form, and notice how, yeah, it'll it'll collapse the navigation pane. I usually work with this closed or hidden. All right, so if you open up a customer, now this is modal. You can't go pick another customer. So if I open up orders, and if I open up contacts, I can work with these because they're on top of this form technically, Okay. But if I close customers now, those shut down. See how that all works? Okay, so use use a modal form. And you could turn off the scroll bars and stuff down here too so it doesn't look like that big gray bar there. All right, again, all, all formatting tips I cover in my beginner lessons. Okay, but you can't go to a different customer now. And if you open up orders, you're guaranteed that that's the orders for this customer. Okay, see how that works? So that's it. That's how you can use one line of VB code to shut down another form, to close another open form, okay? In the extended cut, I will show you how to loop through all of the forms in the database and shut them all down in case you want to. One of my other members, Adam, asked that question. He's like, is there a way to loop through all of the forms in the database and shut them all down? Yep, I'll show you how in the extended cut. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos and gold members can download the templates and access the code vault. How do you become a member? Click the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different types of membership levels that are available. Silver members and up will get access to all of the extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and more. Gold members get access to a download folder containing all the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus access to my full beginner courses and some of my expert courses. These are the full length courses found on my website and not just for access. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, ASP, and lots more. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to post any comments that you have. I do read them all. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Click on the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. 
You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of building databases with Access. It's over three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. And it's also free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and you can send me your question there. Click here to watch my free Access Beginner Level 1 course, more of my tech help videos, or to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video from AccessLearningZone.com.